Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Amy, and in today's video, I wanted to share with you the handbags that are part of my ultimate bag collection. A lot of you saw me reveal this beautiful classic flap from the 21A and asked me to do an updated bag collection, but instead of doing that, I really don't think that my bag collection has changed that much. Aside from maybe a bit of a cleanup because I did some culling earlier this year So I thought this would be an even more fun idea to do But first I wanted to thank today's video sponsor Italo Jewelry Thank you so much for sending me these beautiful pieces that I am currently wearing So I have one ring here, a bracelet right here, and a beautiful necklace right here So I'll do some close-ups so that you can see They have several styles, I just chose the style where it's graduated So it goes from smaller crystals to larger crystals in the middle only one setting there's no adjustment but can you imagine this if you style it into winter with a turtleneck and putting this on over also on my arm I have their tennis bracelet here is the little clasp closure I love a good tennis bracelet especially if this fit you better because on me it's a little bit large as you can see I have baby wrist it would be a nice compliment to if you wanted to stack with your other bracelet or if you wanted to just wear it alone on a special occasion last but not least they also sent me this beautiful ring which is all around crystal pave and as you can see it's not just pave on the surface but also on the side they are sterling silver base and rhodium plated as far as i remember and the crystals are just crystals they do worldwide free shipping as well as one year warranty on all their pieces and a 60 day return and these are the packaging that it comes with you get the jewelry box with velvet lined and it comes with the outside box which is a magnetic box so these would make really beautiful gifts I will be linking all these pieces down below if you're interested or if you just want to browse whatever else they have pretty sure I have a coupon code that you could use as well so that you can save a little bit at checkout okay let's get into the handbag section I feel like this is even a really good tag video actually but probably people are already doing it right I'm probably the only one who hasn't done the ultimate five bag collection and by the way I'm not choosing five bag because it's impossible I tried I really tried I honestly don't think I can part with any of these that I am about to tell you of course never say never but at the moment and for the foreseeable future I feel like these are my forever bags a no-brainer of course is the classic flap in the small size this is the light gray color caviar from the 21a collection and I will link it up here if you haven't seen my unboxing as well as uh, how it looks on me I'm not gonna do modeling shots or anything in this video because I've done so many reviews and you know first impressions and updated reviews of each of these handbags I've been wanting a Chanel classic flop for the longest time and I've never pulled the trigger and finally this year <laughs> I decided that you know what I'm gonna just pull the trigger this time because this is the perfect color the unicorn bag for me and therefore for sure this bag will never leave my collection I think that is a no-brainer right <laughs> so how many of you saw this coming that this would also be a no-brainer a handbag in my collection that I would never ever get rid of which is the square mini and mine is in the caviar from the 17c collection I believe uh, I'm so sorry if I'm starting to forget the collections but pretty sure I got this at the end of 2016 so it was cruise 2017 if you've been watching my videos I've always always said that the square is my preferred length in terms of crossbodying or even a shoulder bag for a mini classic and the fact that it's a black caviar which is impossible to get unless you get pre-love nowadays or from consignment it's a no-brainer i feel like a lot of you who know my collection and who know me will probably see this coming that this is something that i will never ever give up and plus every single bag uh, and but especially this one were very very hard to get i had to hustle and i had help too of course i also had to pick my other classic flop mini and it is the raspberry and this one forgive me if i'm wrong but i believe it's the 18b collection fall winter 2018 again these were not easy to get and i believe this was the actual collection that was the very last one where chanel uh did their last caviar minis i think that alone is extra special because 
after I got this one, there was no more caviar minis from the retail store. Everything else that came out was in lambskin. And of course we have the top handle one from the current, uh, well not current, but like from this year, the first collection that they did the top handle minis, it was in caviar. But even then, they only did it in one season, 21S, and it was done. This bag is extra special just because it's caviar, but also because of the stunning color. It's in red. It's my only classic rectangular mini. And when I say classic, I mean the shape looks classic because we all know that these minis are still seasonal bags in itself. Uh, and only really the classic double flap are considered classics, but you guys know that. But I just had to mention it because some of you will correct me, oh, these are not classic bags. Between these two though, I do prefer the length of this, but I still love this one because truth be told, our phones are still changing. My newest phone is so big, it's bigger than my last iPhone and this bag still fits the largest phone. In fact, it has plenty of space for an even larger phone. So it is really good to have at least a square and a rectangular mini in your collection because with the square, some phones will fit, but with the rectangular mini, I'm pretty sure unless your phone is eight inches tall, then uh, yeah, I mean, that's a huge phone. But <laughs> uh, aside from that, I feel like any future large phones will still fit in a rectangular mini. But I'm just gonna go ahead and show um, my only other caviar bags and then move on to the other textures. So of course I have two of my cocoa handles here. So this would be number four and number five. This color is the ultimate beautiful gray color that also passes as a white. I love the idea of a white bag. I'm not so sure if I'll ever really add one, especially from Chanel because they are very, very pricey bags. Uh, maybe from a contemporary brand, maybe from a lower price um, other fashion house, but as far as my collection right now, I don't have a white bag, so this is the closest as I will get to a white bag. And just to give you a visual, compared to my 21A, um, this is what you're looking at in terms of difference. Very, very different shade between this light gray and this light gray, which is super light gray, but I love both. I honestly feel and still think that if I could just keep one cocoa handle, this would be it because this really just makes my heart sing. The color itself is beautiful. And um, the cocoa handle, I mean, the cocoa handle is a great bag. It really is a lot of value for your money. Anyway, I love my seasonal bag. You guys know that. And the cocoa handle is one of them. Cocoa handles, I don't carry a lot. I only mostly carry them in the summer or when it's warmer weather because I just love the idea of just hand holding or wearing on very thin clothing or bare skin because this strap right here does tend to slide off, especially with bigger winter coats. And it's not a really good crossbody length. I'm sure you guys know that the mini cocoa handle or actually the new small. I feel that you guys will ask me this. So between these two bags, if I had to only choose one and really, really call down my ultimate collection, uh, which one would I get rid of if I had to because they're kind of similar color? Then yes, I have to get rid of the cocoa handle. No questions asked because this is the ultimate unicorn and it took me so many years to get it finally. And also uh, it's not easy to get. My, I mean, none of these bags are easy to get, but ultimately, yes, this would be the ultimate, ultimate handbag collection candidate. Um, but luckily I don't have to choose, right? I get the I get to keep both. Because I already spoke about the cocoa handle in the gray, I will also talk about this one very briefly. I feel like even though they are duplicates because they are the same size and it's the same style of bag, I still had to include this because this one also is extra special. It is one of the last seasons where they still did exotic skin. And no, I don't require an exotic skin handbag in my collection, but it is extra special because they don't do that anymore. And the fact that this one is leather lined, when you get an exotic handle, cocoa handle, which were more expensive, um, they do everything else in leather as well. So it's super premium. The uh, craftsmanship and quality of it also feels better. I did feel that the craftsmanship of this one was way superior. I mean, they were about a thousand dollar more than their um, cloth lined cocoa handles but you just feel the quality. They 
I don't know, maybe they use more experienced crafts, craftsmen to make them. I'm not sure what it is, but you just feel the quality. So a lot of people do wonder between this and the cocoa handle, which one should you get? I still feel like they are very, very different bags. This is a lambskin bag. It's very heavy. It has more of a briefcase look and it's a little bit more boyish if you need it to be. It's like, it doesn't look as feminine. Whenever I wear my cocoa handles, I tend to have to be a bit more girly dressing because otherwise it doesn't quite go with the outfit. And that's also one of the reasons why I tend to wear these in the summer because I tend to love to dress a little bit more you know, girly or just, you know, in my shorts and tank like today, then yeah, sure, it goes with it. Whereas the trendy, yes, it has a lot of these elements too. It can be very, very elegant as well if you were to wear it with a, you know, a nice gown, but it can also be super boxy and very briefcase business-like. It can be so cool as well. That's what I mean. So um, they're totally different. Like I, I cannot really advise whether you should go with the... Coco Handle or the Trendy CC because to me they are totally separate bags and I tend to prefer wearing this in the winter because of its size it's quite boxy it's a much larger bag with my larger winter coats which are all oversized it actually looks really really good together I can just do the crook of the arm or I can crossbody it and I recently just removed the stickers like all the stickers on this bag and it's so super shiny <laughs> I love this black on top. Of course, it is all lambskin inside and out, right? It's all leather line. It's very, very premium. That is the other issue as well. If you're not comfortable with lambskin in general, then you should not consider this bag. Not yet. Until you get more used to the idea of lambskin, maybe start off with a small leather good or a smaller handbag, a less expensive handbag. Don't go for it yet because you would just be scared of wearing it you'll never wear it and then you'll end up selling it so that's why for me it took so many years for me to get used to the idea of owning lambskin bags and now i'm t i'm okay with it like i'm not totally carefree about it but i am definitely okay with it and I'm definitely appreciate and love carrying them because they are so luxurious they are so soft there's also another caveat with lambskin bags that i get asked a lot is do you wear your bags when it's raining or what do you do when it's raining uh, i actually don't wear them that's that's the simple answer i just refrain from wearing these lambskin bags when it's raining and if i just get caught in the rain i just try to shield it as possible as much as possible that's the best way to make sure that you don't get the terrible terrible damages or wear and tear to your lambskin so up next is another lambskin bag however this one is so so much more easy to maintain and to use this is the chanel 19 in the small size and mine was from the 20c collection so very very new it was just the second time around that they had uh, done the Chanel 19 because this bag came out in 2019 mine is in lambskin so it's the shiny lambskin it's beautiful the puffs are still really really healthy like i said in one of the live show i just love the fact that between a goat skin and a lambskin chanel 19 i just gravitate towards the lambskin so much more because trust me i have tried this well maybe not at the same time but i have tried the 19 in a goat skin before and i just did not love it and i'm not saying that goat skin is bad by the way please don't put words in my mouth uh, what i'm saying is that for me myself when i had experienced both the goat skin and the lamb skin i can tell that the goat skin is thicker for sure it feels it gives you that more rubbery elastic leather feeling um some goat skin can be very very shiny like it has very much a thick coat of shine some can be less shiny and just more wrinkly like it just kind of just does its own thing whereas i feel like for lambskin in general they just have this kind of delicate very delicate texture to it it's definitely softer to the touch like very very soft to the touch compared to the goat skin and it's usually a little bit matte but still shiny like i don't know how else to explain it because the goat skin sometimes looks very very shiny like almost like has a plastic coating on it whereas the lambskin is kind of right in the middle and depending on the lighting it just it just looks like very very luxurious so i honestly don't know how else to explain it but for sure the 19 has to be part of my ultimate collection because this is 
probably the only casual and everyday style that I would ever wear because I cannot do that with the classic flap. I cannot do that with the minis. They're too small sometimes. And even with the trendy, which is the larger size, it's still a delicate lambskin. And because the compartments uh, are more restrictive, whereas this is just one big hole, um, it's just a no-brainer. Of course, I have to feature the Gabrielle. I feel like if I don't, a lot of you would start yelling at the screen and say, Amy, what about the Gabrielle? <laughs> I have to say that of all my smaller bags, the mini bags, so I'm including the rectangular mini, the square mini, as well as the cocoa handle and this. This one is the most practical, easy to reach in and out, and also the most roomy. I feel like the cocoa handle is quite roomy too, but because of its opening, it's tapered in, it has that compartment uh, in the middle, and then the back compartment is very, very slim and harder to access. This one also kind of becomes the more everyday, casual, and easy to grab and go smaller bag because the 19 is my everyday you know chanel bag in general the gabrielle is kind of my smaller version of that and honestly i don't really understand why it's not more popular because if you have worn one and if you have experienced one it is a very very easy bag and it's just so cool it's so different from your typical flap looking uh, bag like front flap looking bag, which is a nice change. So it's nice to have something unique I would also include my burgundy one if I had to but um, I will just in this case include this one because the burgundy as much as I love the color too If I'm being a bit more critical for this video because I don't want to just include everything then it's just My collection video, right? Um, if I had to really just choose between the two I had to choose the black because it's the most classic but with the cocoa handle, they are different enough because one is exotic and one is just the regular season. The Mini Lady Dior. This one, I just had to choose it because not only is it also one of those bags where I waited for years before taking the plunge. I bought this during my birthday last year, similar to how I did it with the grey classic flop this year. I just feel like the Lady Dior is so classic and the fact that this is my only top handle evening looking bag that is really really evening especially when life gets back to normal and we can attend weddings and go to functions and things like that you will definitely need some sort of evening bag at least one in your collection whether that is a clutch whether that is a small evening top handle like this if you don't have one that's fine i always used to just wear one of my mini squares or mini rectangular as my evening bag and that's fine but I have this in my collection right so why would I not include it as part of my ultimate collection so I feel like that is uh, one of the reasons why I had to pick it even though this is definitely not an everyday bag getting your phone in and out of it is a big hassle but for a evening size bag like a very proper evening size bag that still fits enough and that you can still put your larger size phone in, uh, this is a great, great choice and that's why I had to include it. So last but not least, I had to include a bag that I don't own already and that is, drum roll, <laughs> the Birkin 25, which I am still after. So up to this point, I still don't have it and I still don't know what color it will be in, when I will get it, etc, etc. You guys know the whole story if you've been following my journey this year. But I feel like as my number 10 and final ultimate bag in my collection would have to be that. I've decided this year for my 40th birthday, a big milestone birthday, I want to attract it into my life and I just want one. Um, I feel like I'm ready in my collection to have one finally. So this is the year, uh, hopefully. <laughs> so yes, the Birkin 25, hopefully sooner rather than later, is the ultimate, ultimate final bag at least for now, that I would include in my ultimate handbag collection. So what did you guys think of my choices? I feel like it's very, very predictable, but I still feel like it's a fun, fun video. And a lot of you who wanted to see my updated collection, you'll just have to watch my old collection videos because it hasn't changed that that much. This year, I've only added one handbag so far, which is the classic flop. So. That's why I feel like it hasn't really changed. But anyway, let me know what were your favorites from this Ultimate Collection. And maybe, maybe you can help me actually. If you had to just pick five, let's just randomly say, 
if you could just pick five ultimate bags from my collection or from what I just presented to you, which, which one would they be? Because I would like to know myself too. I honestly have a hard time picking just five. I cannot, I just cannot. And luckily I don't have to. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video or if you like this type of content, definitely subscribe, like this video. I would love to have you back and I'll talk to you guys again very soon. Bye. Thank you.